So this is the result we have prepared when we are working with the particle system with the use of a lookup table and a ramp in order to change the color from a gradual change between yellow to blue and back to yellow again. So this is what we have done so far. And in the next step, we we'll try to implement a little bit change or enhancement in the output, not from the three-dimensional side, but from a 2D transformation. So before we fit all those graphics to the output window, we try to manipulate some 2D effect. Some of them we have come across before, some of them will be the new one. So what we are going to do, or plan to do, is try to combine the two images. The two images, one of them will be the present one, and some of them will be the previous image, come from the particle system. So we will make use of the over to combine the image. So actually you can make use of other, like the add or difference, or even the composite when you are working with the effect like this one. So the major object we'll try to explore will be the feedback. So the feedback object is actually it will take the output back to the input again and then combine the two of them into something more interesting. So what we plan to do is we send the output from the render window to the feedback object. And at the same time, we also send the output from the render window to the over. So such that we hope to incorporate the output from the feedback and perform some transformation and then put it back to the over to combine. So part of the combined output will send back to the feedback in order to create some of the very interesting visual effect. So what we are going to do is to insert one more texture operator at the top. So the usual one we can play around with with the level. So what we are going to do is to combine the result from here, this direction, and also the immediate whistle response, and then combining by using the overlay effect. So this is some of the initial presentation you can expect to see. But what we are going to do is to combine them into an effect similar to motion blur. So the key point to this one will be the level. And in the level, it comes with a number of change where you can, for example, specify the, the range of the RGB you would like to combine. And the thing we're going to do is only one single parameter is the opacity. We try to play around with the opacity in order to combine the two of the images. So usually we'll try to change this one to a little bit less than one, such that we can have some sort of opacity or motion blur effect by combining the two of them. So another key point we have to specify is the parameter in the feedback. So in the feedback, we have to let the system know after we combine the result and how we would like to send back the result to the feedback objects. So it needs to specify some of the texture operator. And this texture operator will be the result of combining the two of them. So one of the usual practice is we will insert something we call the now objects over here. And if you do not insert the out now object, you can actually directly use the output or the over. And by using the now, it means that when you make change to the other, you do not need to 
we do some of those parameter over here you can always keep the use of the now object over here so what we're going to do is just drag this one to the target top over here and the result will be have a combination of the previous image and the existing image and create this motion blur effect so the amount of the blurring you can actually go back to the level and then treat it with the use of the opacity parameter and you can change according to the level of the opacity to create something very normal in this sense and then towards the end to create something that not too normal with a lot of blurring of the path of the movement so the level you can adjust according to your target visual experience you would like to have and this is the result of what we have done by combining the color change and also the force in the directional force within the geometry and also the use of the feedback texture operator to create the final output right here